Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Empowered, presented by Cancer Warrior Canada Foundation. I'm Rebecca durant Hine, your host for this evening, also an actor, model, teacher, and founder of Arenda Cancer Community and Blog. As always, I want to encourage you to participate in tonight's discussion by posting any comments or questions that you might have down below. Um, and if we do get any questions in during the show, we'll save a few minutes at the end uh, to answer those as they come in. Um, our empowered guest tonight is physiotherapist and personal trainer Anish Sharma. Anish has a Master's of Physiotherapy, a Bachelor of Science, Specialized Honours in Kinesiology, a Diploma in Massage Therapy, and Certifications in Personal Training, Acupuncture, and Functional uh, Capacity Evaluation. In his practice, he combines his clinical experience with up-to-date research to ensure each patient is provided education and treatments that enhance their psychosocial, emotional, and physical well-being. He also has experience working with breast cancer patients during their recovery from surgery to help them maximize their healing and elevate their quality of life post-treatment. Welcome, Anish, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so let's get into it and start with a little bit of background information about yourself. Can you tell people a little about uh, your background and how you came to be interested in physiotherapy and why are you so passionate about physical well-being? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Well, I mean, I kind of wanted to be a physio from a long time ago, especially uh, ever since I was young. And it's partly due to a incident that happened when we were young in terms of a car accident involving my mom. So she literally went through a lot of physiotherapy and rehab oh, wow. and we saw all healthcare professionals come through. And the one that stood out to me the most that actually I saw like physical changes. Right. And, I mean, helping her walk, helping her get back to regular activity, you know, and doing regular arm movements and leg movements um, was the physio. So I'm just yeah. like, you know, if we can help change someone's life and you can physically see it and make them more able, that's a huge deal. And that kind of stuck with me. And, uh, and I've been just constantly pursuing that, like you mentioned before, uh, doing, uh, starting off with a uh, um, personal training, then going into kinesiology, to massage therapy, physiotherapy, and just continuing to grow and get as much tools under my belt possible. as possible to build my. <laughs> yeah, you have quite a list of tools. When I was reading, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. there's never enough. There's never, never enough. No, and that's so wonderful, right? I think it's really important to keep learning, you know, as yeah. we as as we go along in life. Yeah, because there's probably always new stuff coming coming along. I would imagine there's yeah, always thing to up, keep up to date with, and if yeah. you're if you're not keeping up to date, then you're not doing justice to your patients. That's right. That's so true. And it's really wonderful to hear you say that because I feel like some healthcare professionals sometimes, I mean, it's easy. You get stuck in a rut and then, you know, you get used to what you're doing and yeah, it happens. Well, the main thing as a health professional is to uh, sometimes accept that you don't know something and actually yeah. put an active effort into right. actually finding out and advancing yourself rather yes. than just ignoring it. So very it's true. always in the best interest. So I was, I was always built up into this and, you know, and I'm doing what I love and I'm That's seeing it. the results. I'm able to help people uh, okay. change their lives, even if it's small or it's yeah. a big, you know, so it, it ranges in all directions. And, but the main thing is you love what you do and that's what I like right. to do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's really great to hear. Um, so for anyone who maybe isn't familiar with physiotherapy, what is physiotherapy and how can it play a role in cancer treatment and recovery? Well, physio encompasses a lot of uh, things such as like uh, we deal with uh, both physical, emotional, um, psychological states. We combine all those things together and we help basically get function back to the patient. So it's not about just, you know, bending and extending the arm. Right. It's about actually uh, being able to pick up a pot and actually do a whole movement right. and cook or clean or do your bike riding and have the strength and the capacity and the mobility. So it's just about getting into activity. We're all about motion, 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 right. getting you moving again, because that that is that is life. Yeah, movement. That is. Yeah. And it's and quality of life is something that, you know, particularly cancer patients talk about a lot because we go through a lot of things that really heavily affect our quality of life and movement and being able to move is a really big part of that. Because if you're in yeah. pain, you can't move and you make a really good point, even just like everyday activities, like picking stuff up. During the exactly. Spot, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the main thing is we often see or we often see physios as, you know, just um, 
just doing measuring devices right. and you know getting the ranges of motion and getting the strength but the real physio is actually getting you back to the activity, setting goals with you to attain something. Um, for example, if your goal is to, you know, once again, throw a ball again yeah. with your son or daughter or, you know, go for a bike ride, but your back pain is limiting or go for a 5K run because your foot is hurting. You know, it's building up on that. We teach about pain management. We teach about strengthening, uh, stretching, lengthening and yeah. bringing your body to a balance and we look at all the nervous system musculoskeletal system everything and keep it do the best we can right and that's yeah. so important too i think it's really great that you kind of um, especially what you say about like setting goals and things like that because there's that psychological aspect to it 100%, yeah. um yeah and recovery can be really difficult sometimes because of that psychological aspect so it's yeah. really great it's kind of like a holistic yeah like it's always a holistic approach it's never just about oh your shoulder is just moving this right. much okay we just need to get at this no yeah. how does it affect the patient how does it affect the person in terms of their functioning in life yeah wonderful right yes. yeah yeah it's great to, to hear that that's yeah considered the whole the whole person that's wonderful um mm. so on your instagram page and you already mentioned it once but um you talk about movement and movement being medicine so i think that's i think that's just i've never actually heard that before like movement as medicine and i think that's just a really lovely um sentiment and um mm. what does so what does movement as medicine mean to you well movement is life right um if you well if, if you consider a non-living thing, what does it do? It doesn't move. It's just there. It, and when you start moving, it changes your uh, emotional well-being, physical well-being, um, and it, it improves your uh, physical capacity. And, you know, emotionally as well, like you are, you feel better when you move. Like when, right. just, just take, for example, like if you're having a down day, why you're having a down day, what do you tend to do? You tend to seclude yourself, True. not move, sit down in one area. And, and those things just build up. Once you start incorporating any sort of exercise or anything, especially, you know, after operations or right. going through a procedure, yeah. you having the capacity to move, it's, it's medicine in itself. It releases endorphins within True. physiologically as well mm -hmm. to make you feel better. But emotionally, you, you know, people are often very scarred to be like, I'm going through this treatment, even for cancer or whether yeah. any sort of surgery. Yeah. You're going through something and then you're like, oh, will I be able to pick up my kid again? Right. Will I be able to, you know, uh, fix my car, work on my car by myself? Right. Or will I be able to pick something off the ground? And you always have this fear. But as you, as I treat patients, I see like, their views change. Like as, as soon as they start getting movement back and you start moving their arm and the, you start giving them some strength and some strengthening exercise and they can realize their potential. No, I can recover from this. That is, that is medicine in itself. Yes. If you so believe in something, you will achieve it. That's if you right. perceive something, you know, it, it is reflective of that. Yes. And I, I, we, we all, I mean, it's, stereotypical to say in a cancer journey but we say all the time you know like hope is so important and positivity is so important and um if you are feeling yeah like i'm never gonna get back to normal it's tr i would feel like it'd be much harder to heal because um oh, yeah there's that psychological element so that's that's really and, interesting and, and that's where movement affects you a lot yeah. like if yes. you just get up and go for a nice fresh walk outside, you feel so much better. Oh We've God. all been in this situation with COVID right now. Oh we were God. locked up. Yeah. That is movement as well. Yeah. Like you're locked up in a space. And then when you go outside, why do you go outside? To feel good. Feel it's just good. movement. It's built in our to a body. Yeah. So absolutely. That is why it's like the biggest medicine. Yes. <laughs> and like now that I think about it, I heard the advice from many women who had gone through cancer before me say, saying like, you know, make sure that when on the days you feel good that you go for a walk or you do some sort of activity because it'll, yeah, it'll just make you feel better. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. there's so many side effects to cancer treatment, yeah. as you guys know, um, yeah. more than me, because you've actually experienced it. Mm -hmm. So you can relate to this quite a bit. And it's all about doing things in moderation yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> To, to help you feel better because you feel better, your body's going to respond better. How you feel mentally is how you're going to feel physically as well. 
So true. Yeah, that was huge for me in, in this whole process was really learning about the mind body connection and that there really is one. Yeah, oh, yeah. And that it really affects our physical health, how we're yeah, what our mental state is like. That's, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we are made, you know, well aware a lot of a lot of the physical effects of breast cancer and breast cancer treatment, we're kind of prepared for it. But um, we don't really talk that much about um, how it could affect our musculoskeletal system. And uh, aside from like, oh, you might want to, you know, do these stretches after your surgery. So what are those musculoskeletal side effects of breast cancer and surgery treatment? And how can physiotherapy help with them? Well, like you said, you just mentioned in terms of stretching and stuff, that's very generic, but yeah, there are yeah. many, many things that happen. Um, just to list a few, it could be just to... Um, you know, you're having any shoulder. So for example, shoulder issues, um, surgery in itself, in any area, it doesn't have to be in the shoulder. It could be in the hip, knee, ankle, anywhere. Right. When you have a surgery is it's, it's an invasive technique and it yeah. affects the functioning of everything. Um, you're literally, you can just imagine on yourself, like when we get a paper cut, we tend to even not use our hand. That's right. And here you're getting That's a huge true. surgery done. It's massive. And it alters your function. So uh, I'm going to take your shoulder, for example, your glenohumeral joint. So your shoulder joint, mm -hmm. basically, you can get impairments on that as a result yeah. of uh, as a result of the procedures. Um, you can get rotator cuff injuries. Now, rotator cuffs are a group of muscles for your shoulder that are responsible for turning in and out, lifting up and down, and doing those types of movements. Um, you can get reduction in uh, mobility. So you won't be able to lift up your arm as much. Right. Right. Um, or you'll be stiff or you'll be, it could be partially due to pain as well. Pain That's of true. fear, fear of movement. Right. Right. Um, you can get, you can get uh, additional things such as frozen shoulder as a result of surgery as well, yeah. or even treatment in itself. Right. right. And um, you can also get a um, uh, post opter after surgery, you can get into positions where you can get stuck, um, for example, in a protective way. Uh, usually whenever we have any shoulder right. injuries, we tend to protect our arm. Right. We go like this. Yeah, hold it up. <laughs> hold it up, internal rotation, and hold it close to your body. Yeah. That's what we do. Whenever we were scared, what do we do? We That's go true. inward. <laughs> so we get it stuck into the situation. But, yeah. for example, uh, physiotherapy will help you get that range back because even for treatment itself for like radiation for people yeah, who undergo right. it, you have to go and hold this position for like 30 minutes yeah you do now, after surgery if you're like this how are you going to get the treatment that's true <laughs> so getting that back we do the, all the uh, you, we try and get rid of the muscle stiffness as a result of that um neck pain as a result of uh altered use as well because whenever you have any problem with your shoulder functioning what do you tend to do? Instead of lift and reaching like this, you end up lifting like this. Like this. So you're actually making it worse, I guess. Well, you're, you, this, your, your body is very smart. We tend to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and instead of causing you pain, you know you're going to feel stretch and pain when lifting your arm like this. We use our neck muscles to lift up. Mm -hmm. Now, this, as a result, can cause you headaches, neck pain. Because all these muscles that are attached to here go into your head. That's right. It's and all connected, right? It's all connected. It's yeah. not just like we can't. That's why we have to see the body as a whole. We yes. can't do, oh, we are just treating one part. This we part. have to treat the whole person. Like I said, it's emotionally, physically, yeah. as it's all connected. Um, now, you can also have, as I mentioned, um, uh, musculoskeletal issues arise, such as like altered movement patterns because of pain. So just like this, or you're just fearful of not moving. And a result, result of that, you, you, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, you'll be scared to pick up things or you'll be scared to even think like, oh, can I do this again? Will it injure myself? So you avoid those things. And that's why, like, you, that's where the physio comes in and right. does all of that stuff. Right. Um, and basically, you can also have nerve damage after um, surgery yeah. or even even uh, therapy itself, right. and um, which can cause uh, altered function of your shoulder blades. So shoulder blades, the thing at the back, it yeah. can be sticking out as well. Oh. And um, it, it's called scapular winging. And those things can arise yeah. as well. It's all basically fixed up with strengthening and stretching and getting your mobility back.
yes. right? So okay. there's many, those are just a few things you can get. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll mention one more. So lymphedema, yeah. a lot of you were mentioning yeah. before the video. Yeah. Um, sure. As a result of lymphedema itself, like your arm can weigh a lot more. Right. That's so true. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Your arm can weigh a lot more and that happens to patients as well. And as a result of the increased weight in arm, it kind of pulls on your shoulder and can cause um, uh, altered movement patterns and it can cause weaknesses in your um, shoulder and rotator cuff muscles as well. Altered functioning, that can cause pain too. So we have to factor all those things into consideration. Yeah. That's where physio comes in to help right. with all those things. What's tight, so stretch it, what's weak, strengthen it, strengthen it, get the motion back, that's back, it. <laughs> back in balance. Um, this, this is just, uh, just because you mentioned um, nerve damage, can physio help with nerve damage as well? Or is it just something that you have to be cognizant of while you're doing the physio? Well, work? we can't, we can't basically grow the nerve. That's yeah. your body's response in itself. Um, and when you do have nerve damage, it, it depends on the severity of it. Um, if it ever going to come back or if it's, you know, it, if it re does regenerate is right. very slow rate it's, yeah. it's not like how bone does or how you know uh, muscles recover oh. it's it has its own rate of growth mm -hmm. and but what we do is trying to sometimes some muscles are innovated by um, different nerves that can supply to the area as well so you can use uh, different strengthening techniques and also use other muscles to d complete the task as well right so if, even if it's complete uh, nerve damage we can always right. use other muscle strengthening to Got help it. achieve the goal it. of the patient. I see. I see. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, so there's modification. Yeah. Pardon yeah. me? Modification in terms of right. your approach. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, so we, we talked about this a little bit, but um, like I remember after my surgery, I was, uh, as you said, like scared of the, the air, like I was scared to move it. I was scared to, and like, you know, they had given me stretches and things and I did them for a while, but then I <laughs> wasn't as good about them. Um, so, but, uh, so the, it is our instinct to want to, like you said, protect that area. Um, but from what you're saying, it sounds like that's, you know, the opposite of what we should be doing. So why is it so important to, you know, push ourselves to get up and get moving after a surgery in particular? So it's not so much of pushing yourself. I mean, you want to use that word very carefully in terms of um, it's not like overdoing things. Right. It's about gradually building up into okay. activity. Um, extremes of everything is bad. Yeah. Too much of something is bad, you know, and too much of something is yeah. bad as well. If you drink too much water, you can have issues. And if you drink too much, too less water, that's an issue in itself. Exactly. Moderation is key to life you know, mm. to everything in life, moderation is key. Um, but in terms of getting up and moving, it's very, very important um, after surgery or anything like that, or any invasive technique, yeah. uh, when we tend to protect ourselves. So we, we can, we can start getting complications in our body, um, we can start developing um, a chest complications, because we don't take enough deep breaths. Oh. Right? And that can cause you to have like things that, such as uh, um, pneumonia or anything like that so that can develop as a result of that too. Okay. Um, you can start getting fluid buildup in your chest. Yeah. So deep breathing right after surgeries are very important, getting up and moving. That's why we need air. If you notice yeah. like after any surgery on your chest or anything, we physios always go in and we teach you breathing exercises. Breathing deep breathing exercises, just to get everything down and moving again. Right. Right. Um, it gives you more energy that way as well. Um, the other things, it can be, uh, you know, if you don't move your limb, you can go into, again, like I mentioned before, stuck positions. So you can right. get frozen shoulder. Um, then the longer you wait to move, the stiffer you get. <laughs> and the harder it is later on to get that mobility back you have to work so much harder so it's always best to just do gentle ranges of motion gentle yeah. movements there's various exercises that's like a whole video on itself oh, yeah. <laughs> but gentle mobility exercises just even after your procedure we encourage that we come to you and we do all these things but 
if you don't do that stuff, your recovery is hindered even more. Yes, right. your pain, you won't be in pain because you're not moving. Mm -hmm. But consider, always consider what you're going to be facing afterwards if you don't move very now. True. That's very right? true. Yeah. Then you're going to be limited. Sure, the pain's gone, but you won't be able to wash your hair. Wash your hair. Yeah, you won't be able true. to put on a, ja uh, a shirt from the up top. You have a different kind of pain. <laughs> reaching behind, scratching your, putting on a bra, scratching your back, right. things like that. It's so all, all these things, you have to do, do your movement. But how you do it, you have to build it up slowly. Mm -hmm. in, terms of, in terms of activity, it's uh, the American College of Sports Medicine. They recommend for average individual to do like around, you know, um, 130 minutes, I believe of ex uh, exercise per week. So about three days a week. And, but it, that at the beginning for you is quite a bit. We yeah. would probably do less than that, right? Um, pushing yourself to a level, we have a rate of perceived exertion scale. So is modified. So zero being no exertion right. and 10 being like, you are working your hardest, you're giving <laughs> all your best. Yeah. What you guys should be doing after you know after chemotherapy two to three hours even after that you should never push more than a seven okay. out of ten you got to stick around that area okay. and even less if possible you stick right. around five six that means you're just giving moderate amount yes. again like i said moderation is key moderation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes absolutely because um I imagine you know, some people, you know, don't want to, they like, they kind of want to protect their body and all of that as well. Um, and like you said, you know, too little of something is not good, but too much as well, because I think also some people have the mentality that they just kind of want to get back to normal as fast as possible. And that's um, something harms, harms them as well. You right. end up, you end up damaging yourself quite a bit, especially when you have such invasive uh, treatment. Yeah procedures there's so many side effects of radiation yeah. chemotherapy your your body is recovering from that and you pushing and overloading it in itself can cause harm as well because you true. you're not at you're not at that point you are not what you were before right right and you have to build up to that you're you're right. you're weaker yeah. but you will get stronger yes it's not, it's not the end state. Not you forever. always get better. Yeah, exactly. No, it's not forever. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I think that's hard to keep in mind because you do, you're like, I want my life to go back to normal. Because exactly. especially with cancer you're dealing with, or even, you know, like a, a big injury or a car accident or something, you know, you um, are dealing with a lot and you just kind of want to get back to normal. But it's uh, a good point you make about really thinking about the long term um you know and and i would would think working with someone like yourself would be very good for that and you know and reassuring that you know you will get back to the way that you were you know having someone there being like you know you can do it but just not yet you know? yeah I, I tell people all the time when they come for uh, any sort of treatment um when they leave right after the treatment after the mm -hmm. first uh, one or two sessions I tell them I'm like you may experience what I call a honeymoon phase <laughs> so when you think you're if you're doing good and you're feeling good and you think you can go back to the regular activities that yeah. you did before it's too early take a break keep with your exercises don't yeah. do anything more. <laughs> yeah. because you 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 again like you, with movement with any sort of therapy you you're like no I want to get back more faster yeah. faster faster yeah. if you push yourself too much it just like instead of instead of like uh, people that come like with sports injuries, mm -hmm. okay? And they're like, oh, I wanna get back to right. you know, sport yeah. right away. Um, I got a game next week, but no, you are injured. Yeah. If you go back, play that game, you're gonna be off for the rest of the season. That's right, that's so true. Would you be off for one game or over the rest of the season? Yeah, it's okay. in your hands. So Same true. analogy applies to regular treatments as right. well. Yeah. Like, do you want to be in pain for the rest of your life? Or do you want to take it nice and slow yeah. and get back to regular activity? Regular activity? Yes, it's a longer process, but you'll get better. You'll yeah. get there eventually. You will. Yeah, I hurt my wrist not too long ago, and I I did that exact same that exact thing. I I was after a week, I was like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to work out again, and yeah. um, I was like, it feels good. It feels okay. You know, I can move it, and yeah, I should not. <laughs> I should not have. And then yeah, and then I ended up it, having it, to take it, a, another break for like two weeks because I yeah overdid it yeah yeah so it's an excellent point that you make yeah 
Um, so we may have already touched on it, but um, what's the most important thing to keep in mind when we're starting physical rehabilitation after surgery or injury, if it's not something that we've gone through before? Um, is there something that's important to keep in mind? Yeah, for sure. Um, like some of the things that we have mentioned already, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you want to, you know, uh, it takes time. Okay. It takes yeah. it, it, persistence. Um, you know, you need to be compliant to your exercises. You need to stick to your exercise programs. You need to not just exercise in, in terms of guidance from all medical health professionals. You need to, if you stick to the advice that they're providing, they have experience yeah. in terms of what they're dealing with. That's right. And they're only telling you to make your transitions as smooth as possible. Right. Right. Um, and when you're starting physio, like, again, don't push yourself. Slow and steady wins the race. Somebody mentioned that in yeah, the comment. Yeah, someone just, commented <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, that's a good mentality. There are times where you have to push. Like I push my patients sometimes as well. But yeah, it's a good thing to do nice and steady. And we will guide you if you need to push even more. Yeah. But listen, be one with your physio. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the main thing. It's like. I love that. You. You got, you got to cooperate with any health professional. If that's you right. don't tell them, they will not know. Yeah, right? that's absolutely right. And it's like, you know how your body is responding best. You know what's going on in your body. I do not know what's going on with your body. Right. Like in terms of like what you're feeling, what you're going through, right. whether it's physically, emotionally. If you don't, uh, you know, give me that information, I won't be able to modify and right. actually treat to the best effectiveness yes very so true. be one with your physio I like that. you know set goals like i said earlier in the program as well short-term goals long-term goals they go a long way both uh, physically and mentally you like, when you achieve those goals and you set yeah. something you set a target and you're like okay i am going to get here by the end of this time right and if i achieve this when you achieve it you're like Good. this is awesome like yeah. i've accomplished something yeah. And keeping in touch with that is a huge thing. And that helps you emotionally, physically, everything. It everything. just makes you feel better. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, and the key is to set long-term and short-term. So long-term yeah. is like, if you just set one long-term, like, I want to well, get back to sport. Never ending. Well, that takes forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. you, you definitely have to uh, do that uh, uh, carefully, uh, yeah. short-term and long-term. Long -term. Um and also, like, you want to make sure, you know, don't push yourself too much. You have to pace yourself. Yes. Okay. Uh, don't do too much. And it, even with exercises, I yeah. prescribe exercises to people. Um, and again, they have the attitude that, you know, uh, more is good, more is good. <laughs> right. And uh, when when they do that, then mm -hmm. what happens is they they burn themselves out. They mm -hmm. uh, get out of energy and they, they're not able to function as well. Mm -hmm. So stick to the plan, listen to your body, respond to it and respond to your physio and let them know. Um, it mm -hmm. Physio will help you in a lot of ways. ways. It can help you with you know, depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. weakness, uh, mood swings, you know, if you're having weight loss or weight gain, right. loss of um, muscle strength or loss of muscle size, you know, right. atrophy, you're getting weaker, um, fatigue. It, it's like you have to consider all those things. All of it. Yeah. So it, 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 it goes a lot in hand with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also, yeah, keeping in mind that there, as you say, like there are so many different things going on. There are lots of layers it can maybe help with the, you know, being patient and not, <laughs> and not wanting, you know, just keeping in mind, like, you know, there, I might feel good, but there's still, you know, a lot of healing that's taking place under the surface. And uh, yeah, you want to be really mindful of that. Sorry, I can't hear you right now. It's kind oh. of cut off. Let me turn that up. Can you hear me? Try moving to a different area. <laughs> no problem. Hopefully it's not yeah, me. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. So I think just make, make. I think all of that, as we were saying, plays into um 
into yeah being patient and i think the what you said about long-term and short-term goals too i think having those short-term goals helps you like you said be a little more patient um because you can still see the progress um as opposed to just having that one goal way in the future and it feels like it's almost impossible to reach exactly. yeah yeah good things good things to keep in mind okay um so when we were uh, talking earlier before this, um, you mentioned that physiotherapy plays a role in energy and strength conservation. Um, and I feel like those are important things for people who are going through treatment um, and after surgery, because you don't necessarily have as much, <laughs> as much, as much energy or strength. Um, so can you explain that connection between physiotherapy and energy and strength conservation? Um, and yeah, why that connection is important? Well, in terms of functioning, like I mentioned before, um, if you overexert, mm -hmm. um, you do things too much too soon, um, it can burn you out and actually right. make you feel worse. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Um, and do, it's very important to pace yourself, regardless of cancer or no cancer. Anything else. Um, with aging, I see this with patients Very well. true. Yes. Um, they often get frustrated in terms of how much um, they can do. And right. they want to do so much more, but obviously, as you age, your capacity reduces. Yes. And in order to maintain the capacity, you need to do, again, um, maintain strength and physiotherapy and do all that. But um, you need to pace yourself. Um, pacing will help you conserve energy, make you feel good, and make you do more. Right. Um, people often do, like, I'll give you an example. For... Um, instead of for pacing example instead of pushing yourself for example if you go home you got to vacuum your house yeah okay <laughs> you know your capacity and you you push yourself and you're like okay uh, and you vacuum the whole house and now you got no energy to do anything else it's true <laughs> okay but what you can do instead of instead of doing the whole activity in one shot do one room at a time mm. do one room take a break do something else that doesn't require the same muscle use same. or same, um, the same sort of activity use. Right. So vacuum is all about shoulder use, right? Yeah. Or it could be gardening. It could be right. anything, anything, anything of shoulder yeah. use. If you keep using it for one hour like this over and over, you're going to get fatigued and you get tired. And then your next three days are going to be. Yeah. Crappy. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just do one room, that's going to take five minutes, then go do another activity. You actually gave it rest. Right. And then you can go back to and finish the second round. And finish it. Like that. Sure, it takes longer. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. That's right. Slow <laughs> and steady wins the race. Yeah. And I feel so, that, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I feel like that in particular is really important for um, cancer patients too, because, you know, like you said, with age, capacity r reduces. But um, when you are going through something major like that, um, your capacity is reduced as well, both your energy and your strength, and maybe even like your mental and emotional capacity oh, as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, really important to note, because yeah, it goes again, back to um, what you're saying, you know, you don't want to overdo it and slow and steady wins it. So um, you gotta, okay. you have to approach even even mentally as well. How you, how much? It's not about just physiotherapy and physical component of it. Yeah. It's about interaction as well. Right. How soon um, you communicate with people. Right. How open are you in terms of telling your stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Very um, true. You have to. Uh, there's pacing in that as well. You have to conserve your energy, not to openly do too too much. Right. Yes. And do it within your comfort zone. And yeah. Slowly, slowly open up to people. That's good. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So important. Um, so we, again, we may have already, you know, touched on some of this stuff too, but um, I think when people are starting out at the beginning, um, it, I know for me anyway, the, 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 prospect of healing from all of this was very daunting and it did feel like you know I'm never going to be able to get back to my myself again uh, my my regular self again so you know what what advice do you have people do you have for people who are in that position who are like you know they're just starting out and they're feeling like I'm never going to be the way that I was again and only gets better from here <laughs> That's really good advice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
in terms of if you put even the little amount of effort and you work at it and you have your positive mindset yes positive mindset is key um, absolutely you will see you know the results of your hard work yeah if you do a lot um, like even if you put a little bit of effort in anything you you will see the results you'll see, it. You'll see the fruits of it and it can be a daunting thing like yeah. it's just such a whole big process um how will i do this like i said earlier right. it's like y- you get scared like you mentioned yeah just now. We it's do. like it's a huge procedure mm-hmm. but if you break it down into small tasks right set your goals work with your uh, work with, with your you. peers work with your family yeah. get support um from them support from everyone wherever you can get it it it, it makes the transition much easier, easier. yeah um, and and honestly it strength and mobility and rehab and in terms of your function um after surgery only improves unless there's a very 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 slight chance that you're not going to improve <laughs> right <laughs> but most of the time if you do something yeah. you get a result for that you get a result but it's a matter of consistency yes right yes and being yes. persistent with it that's it and the more you stick to it the better you will be and even after you're done as well this one's probably directed towards you yeah <laughs> <laughs> maintain the exercises do them as uh, much as possible they're only going to make you feel better yes right? it's and, true and it's not just the physical stuff that uh, causes all these things it's the stress um, yeah emotional stuff as well very true when you're more stressed where do you carry your stress most oh, in your right neck, here yeah yeah right? that affects your function as well so true right so don't stress about things try and find ways to manage stress that's, that's very, very good key. advice um you know if you if you do like um meditation or yes. use of good music mm-hmm. um, um in working in an environment that makes you more comfortable right right yeah setting setting the mood the lighting and everything yeah. it, it makes a big difference and it Absolutely. will affect your um return and your uh, physiotherapy as well and that's even so in general life yeah if you're more comfortable with yourself and your environment is going to make rehab much more efficient that's f- excellent advice and it's so it's so true and actually um something that I hadn't necessarily, you know, made that connection between, you know, stress making, because it's true. And especially for, um, you know, breast cancer, which is what we talk about a lot, the, the shoulders and all of that, as we were saying before, are affected so much by that. So if you're stressed, then that's just going to make any of that worse. Yeah. Which, any cancer, any that, dream, yeah, anything, that's true. wherever the area is affected, it doesn't necessarily have to be... Uh, anything can be wherever is affected tends to seize up if you have back problem if you injure your back picking up your kid or uh, picking up something heavy from the ground a heavy box you throw your back what happens your body guards yeah absolutely seizes up up. so it's just it's just a matter of working that area slowly and controlling the things you can the things you can yep right and not worrying about the things you can't control that's right that's very good advice. Very good advice. Yeah. Because sometimes there is, sometimes there is just stuff that is out of our control. Um, often when it comes to medical stuff, you know, there's, yeah, there's things we can't do anything about. So yeah, you can't stressing about, about it, it only so makes there's it no worse. point in worrying about it. That's right. But you do what you can in terms yeah. of controlling things around it. Right. Yes. Yes. Back. I love that. I like, yes. Control what you can around it. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Um, I did want to ask you before we go, we're almost out of time, but uh, you you have quite an active um, Instagram page, and I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a bit about like what you post on there because I found it really interesting. I've never seen a physiotherapist who <laughs> has such like an active Instagram page. Um, so like, what kinds of stuff do you post on there um, if people are interested in following you and learning more about what you do? Yeah, so uh, basically, I do I, I make regular posts mm-hmm. on uh, my Instagram page, which is called t.o.physio. Yes. Um, it's also on my Facebook as well. So people follow me there too. Awesome. Um, busy, but it's just general information. I like to give back to the community. Yeah. I mean, uh, work aside, it's, it's good to help out people that either don't have access to it or can't afford it. It's very and it's true. It's good to give back to the community. I mean, yeah. uh, 
people tell me they're like, oh, why are you why are you putting out free information? They, right. Like, they're just gonna do that and not come to you. I'm like, no, they're gonna they see that will. and then come to me and be like, so hey, true. this guy actually worked. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> you and, can and tell it's me more. yeah, yes, exactly, right? Yeah. Yes. So I mean, and I I make regular posts. People comment and uh, they or they send me a direct message and be like, hey, Anish, can you talk about I'm having wrist problems, like you said? So right. then I wouldn't. Uh, obviously there's a Talk waiting list already of people yeah, just I bet. <laughs> who have messaged me but eventually i will get to them and be like okay today we're going to be talking about self-management techniques right yes. um and i try and do things that you can do around the household or by yourself That's that great. doesn't require anyone else so right. at least it's a way of you know healing yourself and taking yeah. care of yourself that's, that's right. the main thing that's I, right. I try to empower the patient as much as possible yes you don't want to make anyone dependent on anyone. No. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. You want to make them independent. You want to make them functional on their own because that's what gives them power to get better. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So yeah. I make posts regularly on that. And, uh, that's wonderful. And from that, people reach out to me. Um, and uh, it, it, it really feels good because you've actually made a change in people that you don't you're you not even, even close to there's That's people right. in like uk or india or Which wherever it's just like you know they message oh this worked thank you so much thank it's, you it makes you feel better because you're giving so back good. to the community and that's the right that's right and what you give out will come back right so it's um it i owe it doesn't it doesn't uh i think it, it only serves you and everyone else to uh give give this information for free but to yeah just to gift it to people because yeah what you the energy you give out will come back information is it's is for sharing is for the wealth of right. knowledge if yeah. you keep it to you it is useless that's <laughs> right it's yeah exactly because you have it to help people so why not you share it people. and that's yeah. what i like to do so i just that's make so regular wonderful. posts on that and just you know motivational quotes and things like that it's just simple stuff there's nothing too fancy but you know, any way I can help out people, that's yes. the main thing. And that's so get wonderful. my exposure out. And it's been working so far. So that's great. I'm, that's wonderful I'm to hear. <laughs> um, I just see we have did have one question come in uh, quickly before we go. Um, it says, can you tell us a little bit about bad postures which give back pain? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, there's a lot of bad postures. I bet. But <laughs> <laughs> now, how we function in ourselves, okay? Um, for example, um, uh, in our society we do a lot of sitting okay? yes everything we go we go like this we are yeah. on our phone like this yep. we are on the computer that's like right this. we are driving like this like that we're so sitting true. on the couch like this. yeah we are doing uh, everything everything is just in a slouch forward protracted position so true now when you maintain a position there's no you know, correct posture or, or bad posture is it's about your body and how it responds. Mm -hmm. But when we project and we place our body in um, these extreme positions, over time, our body adapts. Like I said to you mm -hmm. earlier, our body's yes. very smart. Right. And it finds ways to adapt Get around. and to make things easier. Now, if you're always slouched forward like this, automatically your chest is going to get tighter. True. Same thing. Same thing when you uh, go through surgery. Remember this thing? Yes, that's right. Chest tighter. Yeah. Everything. So opening Hold up forward. and doing this is much, much harder. Same thing. Well, even if you don't have surgery done, if you maintain this position for a long time, this gets tight. Right? Makes sense. And that affects your shoulder function as well. So if you're right. like this, if you pick up your arm, you can only go up to here. That's uh, true. <laughs> like this. I can automatically raise my arm uh, all the way. Yeah. Now, when I'm slouched, I can push it and go all the way, but it's right. causing pinching. It hurts, and yeah. And that constant irritation because of your posture being like that can develop into a problem. Wow. Yes. Right? So interesting. So strengthening your back, opening up, extension as much as possible, taking frequent breaks is very, very important. Getting up from your chair every 30 minutes, yeah. you know, just to open up. Same concept that I explained for the upper body applies to the lower body when yeah. you sit you're in a flexed position it's very true so these become tight these yeah become tight the lower back. yes that creates lower back problems as well so getting oh, yeah. up stretching your hip flexors straightening out your back doing yeah, some strengthening yeah. exercise for your back very important getting very some important. mobility twisting and turning just simple stuff yeah just give it a stretch Again, movement movement is medicine. is medicine i love that <laughs> <laughs> if you don't move you're gonna get hurt 
right? seize up. Yeah. Seize up. <laughs> yeah. Movement is life. I love that. Yeah, it's so true. And I couldn't agree more. Wonderful. All right. Well, we are we have quickly filled 45 minutes. I just want to thank you so much for being here for speaking with us tonight, sharing your expertise with anyone with everyone. It's been really helpful, really interesting. I learned um, a lot of new stuff. Um, and if anyone would like to work with you is through Instagram, is that the best way to get in touch? Yeah, you can message me on Instagram or message me on Facebook or you can uh, give me a call uh, or at the t at t dot t o dot physio Great. Uh, Instagram and uh, feel free to contact me um, or you can uh, give a, a ring or a message to my phone at uh, 306-502-1403. Wonderful. And that is my number. And in terms of uh, treatments, I offer treatments at home. So oh, that's especially great. during this COVID situation, yeah. I was doing it before as well. Uh, what I do is bring the whole clinic treatment table that's amazing. Machines and everything to your house. Amazing. And uh, I do treatments that way. And people are finding it really, really good. Because that's fantastic. One, you don't have to leave your house. Yeah. And you don't have to commute. Yep. And it's it saves time. And it's, yeah, absolutely. Within, again, is in an area that you're comfortable with. In yeah, your which yeah. Which makes your treatment that much that much better. easier. That's right. And for people with cancer too, I mean, we're not feeling great. So if you can stay in your house, and you know, you might not be feeling up yeah. for traveling. That's really great. That's great to know. Wonderful. I mean, there's a couple of people that I'm treating right now who are going under radiation yeah. and chemotherapy, and we they don't like to go out as much of and, you know it suppresses your immune system yeah. and everything so Especially i take a lot right of now. precautions in terms of yeah. um sanitizing everything right. and coming in and, and doing the treatment at home which is yeah. amazing it's wonderful. and it just makes it that much more effective that's great that's so fantastic great to know yeah. that you do that that's awesome well thank you once again for being here and uh thank every thank you to everyone who is watching um if you'd like to learn more about me and arenda cancer community you can go to our website at arendablog.ca or you can find me on facebook at arenda cancer community fb for facebook group um and i you know i post extensively about you know my experience with integrative cancer care and um we talk about diet and nutrition and uh, a lot about mental and emotional health and yeah we'd love to see you there come on over um empowered live series is of course brought to you by cancer warrior canada foundation it's an organization if you don't know already that works to raise awareness um about prevention and early uh diagnosis it helps to raise funds for research and they are helping people right now through covid with things like food delivery and sanitation products delivery and that kind of thing. So if you or anyone that you know is in need of some help, um, you can uh, give them a call. You can find them uh, on on Facebook uh, and message them through there and contact them through there. And their phone number is at the bottom of the screen right now if uh, you need to, to contact them for some help. So thank you once again, Anish, for being here. It was really thank wonderful. You. Thank you. And whatever you guys do, like, is amazing. Bringing everyone, all this, providing information to everyone and organizing it's this is a big, big deal. And yeah, it helps a lot so of people. Important. So I really appreciate that. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on your show. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. And thank you, everybody, once again for watching. And uh, tune in. We'll be back on Tuesday with another episode. So we'll see you then. Take care.